What must I do in order to have everlasting life? This was the question asked by the young rich man from Jesus Christ, and Christ gave the answer. But every gospel of the Mass is an answer of Jesus Christ to this question on what must we do to have everlasting life. Let us try to find out the answer of Jesus Christ taken from the Gospel of the Fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, which at the same time we celebrate the Feast of the Presentation of Jesus Christ by His parents at the Temple. According to the Gospel, to the question, What must I do to have everlasting life? The Gospel presents to us the example of Simeon, an old man who was uh, working in the temple, and Anna, a widow who was also working in the temple. This answer to the question has been presented to us since Advent and through Christmas, and now in the Sundays in Ordinary Time, whose general heading in the old missal is developing faith. So from Advent through Christmas and up to today, the Gospel has been presenting to us examples of people who have faith. This is in answer to the question of Christ, what must I do to have everlasting life? The answer is that you must have faith. And this is a very difficult answer because faith is a supernatural virtue. It is called a theological virtue. So nobody can understand it. Nobody can attain it by pure human means. It is a gift from God. So either God gives it to you, and if He doesn't give it to you, you don't have it. It is a supernatural virtue. And you will notice that from Advent through Christmas and up to now, the Gospels had been presenting to us examples of people who have faith. We have the example, for instance, of the shepherds. They had faith, so when they saw Christ with their visible eyes, they saw a baby. But their eyes of faith, which is an act of the intellect, saw a God. The same thing with the Magi. The same thing happened with, of course, Elizabeth. And at the very beginning, exactly the same thing happened to Joseph and Mary. And in today's Gospel, the Feast of the Presentation, we have the example of Simeon and Anna. Now, faith can be described as belief in Jesus Christ as God and man. And so these people in the Gospel with their physical eyes have seen a baby, a physical baby, a human baby, but with the eyes of faith, which is a faculty of the soul, they saw a God. Now the reason why they saw a God is because God gave them the theological virtue of faith, something that was not given to King Herod and the Pharisees and the scribes and many people yet in Jerusalem, because Christ did not give them this supernatural virtue. They could not see the divinity in the humanity of Jesus Christ. So, the most important first step of the New Testament of what we must do to have everlasting life is to have faith. 
Now, most of the people that has been described in the gospel, from the shepherds, the Magi, Elizabeth, Zachariah, and now Simeon and Anna, were living in the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament teaches us a life of repentance according to the Old Testament, which is the repentance presented and taught by God the Father. It is found in the Old Testament and preached by St. John the Baptist. And so all these people, the shepherds, the Magi, and Simeon and Anna were practicing this repentance of the Old Testament. The apostles of Jesus Christ, the first ones, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, were described as followers of St. John the Baptist, and therefore they knew what was the repentance of the Old Testament, and they were putting it into practice. So it was because these people were putting into practice the life of repentance of the Old Testament, and they did it perfectly, is what disposed them to receive the theological and supernatural virtue of faith. And it is the supernatural virtue that gave them the faculty and the power to recognize the divinity of Christ, which only the soul can see. However, in the New Testament, we have what you call the New Testament repentance. We have to have lived this life of repentance of the New Testament for us to even easier make the act of faith. So the rule is that God will only give the theological and supernatural virtue of faith to those who have repented perfectly. The repentance of the shepherds and the magi of Simeon and Anna were practically, practically New Testament repentance, even if they did not know what was the New Testament repentance. But because they knew the Old Testament repentance, they had the proper disposition to know directly from God what was the New Testament repentance. So let us look at the description of Simeon and Anna. What is it in them that made them worthy to receive the supernatural and theological virtue of faith and which enabled them to recognize the divinity in the humanity of Christ. Simeon was described as a just and righteous man. Now the word just and righteous is practically the description of a New Testament saint. Like Saint Joseph, for instance, was living in the Old Testament. He was put into practice the spirituality of the life of repentance of the Old Testament because he lived in the Old Testament. But he was described as a just man a description that is peculiarly New Testament description. And not only that, Simeon was further described as a man who feared God. Now, the fear of God can be either Old Testament fear of God, which is described in the act of contrition, and it can also be the fear of God of the New Testament, which is likewise described in the act of contrition. The Old 
Testament fear of God is in the words, I am sorry because the fear of hell. Your fear of going to hell is fear of God. It's fear of going to hell, but it is Old Testament fear of God. The New Testament fear of God is but most of all because they have offended thee, my God, who art all good and deserving of all my life. So what kind of fear of God did Simeon have? Well, probably it was the fear of God of the Old Testament, but he was showing a fear of God in the New Testament, though he hasn't heard the teaching of Christ. Add to this the fact that he was going to die after he recognized Christ as the man of God. Now, what is it in Simeon that shows that his fear of God was not only Old Testament, but by the grace of God, it is also New Testament. And the Gospel says, because he looked forward to the consolation of Israel. He was looking forward to what will be the happiness and consolation of Israel, which is to see the Messiah. Now, that is New Testament spirituality, that Simeon was concerned for the salvation of the Israelites. That is love of neighbor. That can only come from love of God. Then, of course, you have Anna. Anna was uh, a woman who was conscious of being a virgin, but he married eventually, but after being married, the husband died, and she continued to live a life of virginity in the temple. And her life was described as she was in the temple praying and fasting, and she never left the temple continuously fasting and praying. Now, Fasting and prayer are parts of the life of repentance of the Old Testament. In the New Testament, repentance also consists of prayer, fasting, and the performance of good works. And Anna, after she recognized that Jesus was man and God, did not die. She continued to live in the temple, she continued to be alive, and therefore, with her repentance, which was Old Testament, but she also had the beginnings of the repentance of the New Testament, she would eventually enter into the realm of the New Testament because she did not die unlike Simeon. So there you have what must you do to have everlasting life? You must have the faith of the shepherds, the Magi, Elizabeth and Zachariah, and now the faith of Simeon and Anna. Today, we have a great difficulty of making the act of faith. And Christ himself had prophesied that the day will come that there will be a decay of faith and as a result, the waxing cold of charity. To go to heaven, we have to love God and neighbor and that is called charity. That is very different from emotional love or the love that exists between Romeo and Juliet. Charity is a theological, supernatural, spiritual virtue. 
It cannot be attained by man by ordinary means. It is exclusively a gift from God and is only given to those who have perfect faith, who has repented the Old Testament way and has repented in the New Testament way. It is only when you have perfected your repentance, perfected your repentance, that God gives you the theological and supernatural gift of faith. And Christ himself prophesied that there will be a time that there will be no faith here on earth. Christ said so. When I come for a general judgment, which all of us are awaiting, he says, will I come and see faith on the earth? It was a rhetorical question of which the answer is no. Christ himself answered, no, when I come to judge the world, I will not find faith here on earth. And as a consequence, I will not find charity either because charity is only given to those who have faith. And that is the problem we have today. There is no one who has faith. Of course, there are a few who have faith here and there, one, two, three, or four, five, six, but they are very, very few. For one reason, it's very difficult to detect who has faith and who doesn't have faith, except those who have faith, of course. Those who have the perfection of faith can detect who has faith and who has not. And in fact, in the canonization of saints, declaring people as saints in heaven, the first test is that they must find out if the candidate has faith, which, however, the congregation and its members do not have, and therefore they excluded this criterion in judging whether a person has faith or not. And so what we are having are, we are canonizing people who has not been proven to have faith. If they do not have faith, they are not saints. They cannot be in heaven. And that is a problem we have with canonization these days, that most of the people canonize are doubtful saints because no one can prove that they have supernatural faith. It is the problem that we have in knowing Catholic doctrines. To know what are the teachings of Jesus Christ and to be able to put into practice the teachings of Jesus Christ, we have to receive from God the supernatural and the theological virtue of faith. If you do not have faith, you cannot know the teachings of Christ. You cannot know the teachings of the Catholic Church. You cannot understand the teaching of the Catholic Church. You cannot explain the teachings of the Catholic Church. And that is precisely the reason why the documents of Vatican II had been completely misinterpreted these days because those who are explaining it do not have faith and therefore most of them do not know what they are talking about when they explain the teachings of the Catholic Church. And so here is the biggest problem of the Catholic Church today. As prophesied by Jesus Christ, most of us do not have 
that Catholic faith. And because we do not have the Catholic faith, we do not love God and we do not love our neighbor. We do not love our husbands and wives. We do not love our children and children do not love their parents because the charity that we must have for one another, for husband, wife, parents and children, children and parents, and even when you love your enemies, it must be with charity, which is a theological and supernatural virtue of which many of us do not have. And so the liturgy of the Mass has been emphasizing precisely the importance of faith. In the example of Simeon, the visible sign that he had faith was he had the fear of God. Meaning to say, we must be in the spiritual state in which we are not sure how we stand before God. And because we do not know how we stand before God, we should be afraid that if we die right now, we are not going to heaven at all. The fear of God is that constant fear in which we are not sure if we are pleasing to God or not. And therefore, if we die and fall dead right now, we are surely going to hell. It is the fear that even if we have gone to confession, probably our sins were not forgiven, even if the priest absolved us because absolution from sins and the forgiveness of sin does not depend on the absolution of the priest. It depends on the presence or absence of the virtue of penance in our souls. A priest can only declare to you, your sins are forgiven, if the priest sees that you have the supernatural virtue of penance in your soul. Like Padre Pio, he could see whether a penitent had the virtue of penance or not. If he doesn't have them, Padre Pio would just tell them, you better go home because your sins cannot be forgiven. But most priests today cannot detect whether you have the virtue of penance or not. And so they would just say, oh, I absolve you, your sins are forgiven, go in peace. And so St. Augustine says, most of the time, these Catholics who have gone to confession, but who doesn't have the virtue of penance are like the walking dead. Why? because physically they are walking, but spiritually they are dead. And therefore it is important for us, at least for the gospel for today, to examine whether we have fear of God. The things we are saying, are they heretical? Are they systematic languages? Are we disobeying the commandments of Christ? Now, these are all signs that we do not have faith because one error against the teachings of Jesus Christ is called a sin against faith. And therefore, it's a sign you do not have faith. And so, therefore, even as I preach, I must have the fear of God that I am saying the right things, that I am not teaching you mere human dogmas or mere human teachings. I have to be sure I am teaching the words and the commandments of Christ. There you have the first lesson for today, the fourth Sunday in order to our time, the feast of the presentation 
by married to Jesus Christ in the temple, we have the example of Simeon and Anna, two people living in the Old Testament, but they had the faith of the New Testament because they recognized Christ as man and God. What sign did Simeon show he had faith? The fear of God. What sign did Anna have that she had faith? She was praying and fasting in the temple, not leaving the temple at all. Praying and fasting all the time. Not for a brief moment, but all the time. Unceasingly, that is in obedience to a command of Christ precisely to pray without ceasing. Two people living in the Old Testament, but practicing the faith of the new Testament.